do you want to know what the greatest miracle Moses ever performed was? It wasn't the miracles he did in Egypt with the water turning to blood and the moon and the sun going dark for three days. And it wasn't anything he did in the desert of of the Arabian Peninsula. It wasn't any of those things. What it actually was, he got black people to take what little money they had coming out of Egypt and invest it into creating their own government. And he formulated an administration. He created leaders and chiefs of people who were adamant about keeping the rules, the order, and the culture of that time. This is the greatest miracle Moses ever pulled to me. And that's what we're doing here at the House of Instruction. We are recreating that very same miracle in probably the only place in the world that we can create that miracle. So the only thing that we have to do is participate. Put your money where your mouth is. You can be a great basketball player. You can be a great soccer player. You can be a great entertainer, a rapper, a singer, and you can make millions, even billions of dollars in fashion and brand designs, but you cannot become your own people. You cannot govern yourselves. Well, that is possible as well today. Here at the House of Instruction, we take the same tenets, the same ancient principles, and mesh them with the ancient culture, and we groom kings and queens. We mold and shape our communities. We build communities. We build families. We restore the thing that was broken and we're not waiting for anyone to help us. We are going to help ourselves. We are going to do this with the law of our God, with time and with patience, and we're going to build it slowly and correctly, each and every step being perfected. We're not going to elevate clowns or foolishness. We're not going to promote uh, debauchery and whoredom. We're not going to allow those with money to dictate right and wrong based upon their wealth anymore. We have a law that is perfect and it does not respect persons. A person can be poor and be a governor of the law and have full power and authority to execute the law properly. Moral character is better than wealth. And that stands here. I know some of you may not agree with my viewpoints, and I know you may not agree with my stance. You may not agree with my take on history, but history has never been about agreement. Your agreement and my agreement are two different things. The truth is this. I have received training. I have received the training. I have processed the procedures. I have gone through the steps myself, and I know that it works. To restore a people, you're going to have to marry the law to a culture. And the culture, the cultural society of the world today will not work. I don't care where you go, everyone's culture defines 
the character of that nation. If you have Western culture or Eastern culture, you have to figure out which culture is yours derived from. What people, because if you don't know, you're only going to go somewhere and still have to go through culture shock only to be rejected again. Black people have embraced and created and fostered Western culture and they have not received the acceptance of the powers that be in Western culture to any degree. They just become higher and higher paid slaves, but with the wages and the things that they purchase or buy to facilitate this wealth, they create more traps and more schemes to keep you enslaved, to keep you on the plantation. When Moses led the children of Israel out, the first thing he had to correct was he led them out wrong without a governing system. Jethro corrected this. As great as Moses is, he made mistakes that we can learn from today so that after we establish ourselves this time, we will never fall again. But it starts today with you. It starts with you giving. It starts with you accepting the law, a covenant and tradition. And I don't care whose laws, whose covenant and whose traditions you accept, but you're going to have to pick one. I am inviting you back to the one of origin. If you disagree, you are free to go to any of those places to go in, see what the culture is like. Right. If you want to know where the ancient Egyptians are, they're in Sudan. They are Sudani in origin. Go there. The Egypt you see now was conquerors and and the mixed peoples that came from Rome. You want to see uh, African culture, go there. There are mixed tribes. You will soon find out that there's more than one culture of people there. So you have to accept the rules and laws of that culture. If you want to know the laws and culture of Abraham and his sons, you come here and we will establish you here. We are telling you we're building the community. We are telling you we are making stores and supermarkets to facilitate your wealth, your growth, your development, the growth and development of the community as a whole. Because there is a law no other community will keep. And the, that law is that there shall be none poor among you. So the poorest will have the wealth of King David, the poorest. There will always be levels of wealth, but we will constantly raise the wealth floor of our poorest community members, our poorest citizens. I know that's a lot to open up today's podcast and today's class but time is running short soon it will become inhospitable maybe civil war a little sooner than some predict maybe global war sooner than the experts predict right now we are in the middle Right. This war is about control over the world and black people are in the middle. You are with someone going into the war telling you you need to support us or else we are all going to die. Who is this we? 
because I had no part in this. We had no part in this. As a matter of fact, in the perception of war, the people you are fighting against, we should align ourselves with. My enemy's enemy is my friend because you have not been in any way civil or accepting of us, allowing us freedom to go or to restore that which you stole from us and continually steal from us. You have restored nothing. So, nothing to cry about. We have the opportunity now to leave and build our own somewhere else. And we're taking the opportunity. We are going to do it on our own. One person at a time. We don't need many. We just need one. So right now I want to invite just one. How about the firstborn sons? I want to invite any father, any mother, any uncle, any firstborn son or chosen son to come out and attend our school, join our community, test our word, invest in this son's future, in this son's wealth. Invest. Send him. I'll tell you exactly when to send him. Okay, send him next year during the Hajj. It's a Muslim holiday, comes up every year. Send him at this time, and then we will prepare a feast and a festival for those of you who come after. Let him see, let him report what he has found here. But give. We want like a small amount of money to start the community here. A community, a small community. $12 million to begin, $36 million to expand, but we can expand on our own because we have infrastructure, the infrastructure to develop, grow, and prosper because we are living communally, providing services and products and goods to a larger community who will support us, who does support us, and who allows us to govern ourselves in our way. I'm going to now begin reading, picking up where I left off yesterday. In chapter 31 and verse 16, the sons of Israel therefore shall keep the Shabbat, the Sabta, to perform the delightful exercises of the Sabbat, the Sabt. It is for your generations, for your generations, an everlasting statute between my word and the sons of Israel. It is a sign forever. For in six days, Yah created and perfected the heavens and the earth, and in the earth, and in the seventh day, he rested and refreshed. And he gave to Musa, Moshe, when he had finished to speak with him in Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, the tablets of sapphire stone, and from the throne of glory, Weighing forty sane, inscribed with the finger of Yaya. But the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount. And the people gathered together unto Aaron when they saw that the time he had appointed to them had passed. And Hasatan, the Satana, had come, the adversary. And caused them to error, and perverted their hearts with pride, 
And they said to him, Arise, make us gods that shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Mitzrayim, the land of the West, he may have consumed in the mountain by the fire which flameth from before Yah, and we know not what has befallen him in his end. So the people delayed in keeping the judgments Moses had set. So they had an understanding, and Moses is now getting the details of the judgments. He's receiving the explanations, what to carry out, what to build, how to organize and set this people in the order, to refine it, to perfect it for 40 days. And Aaron said to them, Deliver the golden rings that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So, here it is. They want to reestablish the religion and the order they had in Egypt. Moses is receiving the order that was passed down from Adam all the way to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ishmael, and Esau. He is passing it down. He's receiving it yet again, right? He learned the customs and traditions with Jethro, and he is now continuing in this refinement of this law. And the people start to go back to the ways and the traditions that they had in Egypt. And their wives denied themselves to give their ornaments to their husbands and all the people at once delivered up the golden rings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took from them from their hands and bound them in a wrapper and wrought it with a tool, having made a molten calf. And he said, These, Israel, are thy gods, which brought thee from the land of Mitzrayim. For Aaron had seen Hura slain before him. So they did this with Aaron under duress. This isn't Aaron's choice. So Aaron makes a small golden calf, something about this big, and starts to create his, this religion or this religious practice, which was the same belief system they had in Egypt. Okay? And on the day following, they arose and sacrificed burnt offerings, and the people sat around to eat and to drink and rose up to disport themselves with strange service. So these people started getting back into the practices they had in America, the debauchery. They started, and this is the older generation. This is not young children. This is the older generation. So they began to do what they did in Israel, barbecue and hang out and have a good time and sleep around and creep. Sneaky link. And Yahya said to Moses, descend from the greatness of thine honor, for I have not given thee greatness except on account of Israel. So Moses' greatness is on account of forming the people into a nation, a people. There's no greatness until the nation is formed and kept. But now thy people whom thou didst bring up from the land of Mitzrayim have corrupted their works. Quickly have they declined from the way which I taught them in Sinai. 
that ye shall not make yourselves image or figure of any similitude. For now they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and proclaimed before it, These are thy gods. Israel, which brought thee up from the land of Mitzrayim, and Yahya said to Moses, The pride of this people is manifest before me, and behold, it is a people of a hard neck. So I want you to understand, the golden calf is very simple. You take something and you kill it, and you say it sits at the right hand of God, and it is for the forgiveness of our sins forever. Same thing the New Testament says, okay? So if you take this idea or this belief, this is the same ideology which came from Egypt, except for you can always change the image. So since the cow is for atonement, we'll say it's the cow. If this doesn't work, well, we can make it a person. Now he can stand and pray and intercede on our behalf in heaven for us. So if we commit a sin, we're covered by the blood of this person who is innocent. All of these don't work. They are false. And this is what this is dealing with. But the people don't complain about giving the gold from their earrings and their jewelry to make this calf. They complain about Moses who says, give silver, which is not as worth as much as gold. Give silver. Moses, you've taken too long. Anything worth having and worth building is worth the time, the dedication, and the craftsmanship to build it with care and with diligence. Anything of good quality takes time to build. But they're more interested in entertainment. And now, in verse 10, the Most High speaks to Moses and says, And now cease from thy prayer, and cry not for them before me, for I will let my anger burn like strong fire against them and consume them, and I will make thee a great people. So, the Most High at this point says, Listen, let me kill all these people that are involved in this. And I will make you a great people. Right? We are at this point in our history now where we are getting ready to face this wrath of God again. And we're going to lose a lot of people. I'm not so much as concerned as who we're losing. I'm looking forward to the after, who we will gain. And those who want to join now at this time, you are welcome. And those who join later, well, you are welcome too. You will not be in the same position as those who come now and build now. But nevertheless, you are welcome. And Moshe was shaken with fear and began to pray before Yahya his Allah. And he said, Wherefore should thy wrath, O Yahya, prevail against thy people whom thou didst bring up from the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a mighty hand? And why should the Mitzrayim who are remaining say, It was for evil that he led them out? So now Moses prays. And Moses is concerned about how the West, the people who 
held them as slaves and captives, the descendants, the recipients of the benefits of being Egyptian, how they are going to perceive and what they are going to say about the judgment of killing them when it was because of them that they are now committing this sin. Right? So you, they came out with them. They're at Mount Sinai with them. Right? They're supposed to learn to keep this law and this culture, right? But they just swore on Mount Sinai. And the moment they see, well, Moses is out the way. We don't know what happened to him. There's no way he could have stayed up there that long. He should be dead by now. Let's just forget about it. Let's do things the Egyptian way. Let's do things the American way. Let's do things the democratic way. Let's do things the way we've been doing it because we know it works. Why should the Mitzrayi who are remaining say it was for evil that he led them out to kill them among the mountains of Tabor and Hamon and Sirion and Sinai only to destroy them from the face of the earth Turn from thy strong anger and let there be relenting before thee over the evil that thou hast threatened to do against thy people. Remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou didst swear in thy word and didst say to them, I will multiply your children as the stars of the heavens and all this land to which I have told you I will give to your sons and they shall inherit forever. And there was relenting before Yahya over the evil which he had thought to do unto his people. And Moshe turned and went down the mountain and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand inscribed on their two sides. And here and there were they inscribed. And the tables were for the were the work of Yahya, and the writing was the writing, was Yahya's writing with his finger, inscribed and manifested upon the tables or the tablets. And Joshua heard the voice of the people exulting with joy before the calf, and he said to Moses, "There is the voice of battle in the camp." So now let's take a look at this, Joshua is not participating. So the Most High wasn't going to kill Joshua. He doesn't kill the innocent. He only kills the guilty and the wicked. That's right, you heard me. He kills the guilty and the wicked. The others who are innocent are being killed by your enemies. Right? Bad medicine. Poor food. Poor nutrition. These things are government administrated and mandated. They set before you only what they want you to have. And they act as if this is all there is. And anyone who comes up to teach the fullness of health and nutrition and starts to heal the people, they will suppress Oppress and kill, thereby shedding innocent blood. You can ask Dr. Sabi. But he said, it is not the voice of the strong who are victorious in battle, nor the voice of the weak who are overcome by their adversaries in the fight, but the voice of them who serve with strange service and who make merriment before it that I hear. So they're making music, singing, dancing, twerking. They're doing the thing that they used to do to pass the time and enjoy themselves in Egypt. And it was when Moshe came near the camp and saw the calf and the instruments of music in the hands of the wicked who were dancing and bowing before it. 
and Satana, the adversary among them, dancing and leaping. Okay, back to part two. And it was when Moses came near the camp and saw the calf and the instruments of music in the hands of the wicked. So the ones who thought the stuff from Egypt was still good were dancing and bowing before it and Satana, Hasatan, the adversary, among them dancing and leaping before the people, the wrath of Moshe was suddenly kindled and he cast the tablets from his hands and break them at the foot of the mountain and the holy writing that was on them, however, flew and was carried away into the air of the heavens and he cried and said, woe upon the people who heard at Sinai from the mouth of the Holy One that thou shalt not make to thyself an image or figure or any likeness and yet at the end of 40 days make a useless molten calf. You make a useless idol. It doesn't work. It makes you stupid. The sign of the children of Israel in idolatry is everything you see today. The twerking, the, the debauchery, the whoredom, right? The whoremongering, right? All nobility is gone. And he took the calf which they made and burned it with fire and crushed it into powder and cast it upon the face of the water of the stream and made the sons of Israel drink. And whoever had given thereto any trinket of gold, the sign of it came upon his nostrils. He got a pimple on the nose. And Moshe said to Amram, what did this people do to you that, that you have brought this great sin? And Aaron said, let not my Lord's anger be strong, but thou knowest the people that they are the children of the just, but evil concupiscence, lust, have made them to error. Evil sexual desires, hypersexuality has caused them to error. And they said to me, make us gods, that may go before us for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Mitzrayim is consumed in the mountain by the flaming fire before Yah, And we know not what hath been done to him in his end. So he went up that crazy mountain that's melted, make something to go up there and make this God happy. And uh, we will, uh, we could just do what we want to do. That's Moses. It, he died. So we don't know what to do now. And I said to them, whoever hath gold, this Aaron still talking, let him deliver to thee and cast it into the fire. And Satana entered the fire. And there came out the similitude of this calf. The adversary entered the fire and made the calf. Right? Hasatan, the enemy, the adversary. Why? It's the people from the West talking about how to set something up because this is how we did it in, in, in this is how we did it in Egypt. Worked for us. We were the greatest nation until everything got messed up. And Merche saw that the people were naked, and when they and for they had stripped, they had been stripped by the hand of Aaron of the holy crown, which was upon their head inscribed and beautiful with the great and glorious name, and that their evil report would go forth among the nations of the earth, and that they would get to them an evil name unto their generations. Hi, black people. This is how we got it. 
It starts here at Mount Sinai. Okay? There's a law, a custom and tradition we need to keep. And when we first get out of Egypt and we finally get before the face of the Most High and we get this law, we get this, and we have our customs and traditions and they're starting to be restored, we say, no, we'll kill an innocent man and we'll do this the easy way. And with the death of this innocent man upon his blood, we make this like golden cow and now... He is on the right hand of, of God to intercede on our behalf. Yeah. Keep it up. And Moses stood in the Sanhedrin gate of the camp. He stood at the gate of the court, at the head of the court. Right? Where I'm standing today. And said, Who feareth Yah? let him come to me. And they gathered to him all the sons of Levi. So I'm extending the, inter the invitation to you from the house of instructions, from the gate of the Sanhedrin. And I am asking you, who is on the side of Allah? Who is on the side of Yah? Yahuwah? the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of my people, let him come to me. And they gathered to Moses in that time, all of the sons of Levi. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that there's also the sons of the firstborn sons, every chosen son, be he firstborn to open the womb or be he the choice son of his father. And said to them, thus hath said Yeya, the Allah of Israel. Hear this word from Allah today. For it will not tarry. And it is pertinent to you today. Thus says Yahya Allah, the Allah of Israel, Yasharal, whosoever have sacrificed to the idol of the Gentiles, let him be slain with the sword. Let him be slain with war, let him be slain in the coming war. And now, go, come here, go, pass through the gate of the Sanhedrin to the gate of the house of judgment in the camp. Now, come and invest in this community. Come and build this community, come and learn governmental administration, come and keep this law. Pass through these courses, the courses of the house of judgment, the courses of the gates to get into and become part of the great Sanhedrin. Come, learn again the customs and the traditions of judgment. And with prayer before Yaya, and you're going to come and you're going to do it and you're going to learn to pray. And you're going to learn how to serve Allah again with this law. That he will forgive you the sins. He will forgive you of this sin, this sin that you're making right now, this life that you're living around the world, this scattered living. Whether you're in Africa, Europe, Asia, or anywhere in the Americas, Canada included, anywhere except right here in this place, which is fixed. If you come with prayer before your Yah, you invest here, you give here, and you build here. That he will forgive you this sin. First. Now, take vengeance upon the wicked workers of strange worship and slay even a man his brother. 
a man his companion, and a man his neighbor. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Musa, and all the people who had the mark in their nostril there that day fell by the slaughter of the sword, a number of about 3,000. And Moses said, offer your oblations. So come now, we have to gather the things to rebuild and make the oblations. Because when this war comes, everybody is turning on everybody now at the word of God. The civil war is coming. And now you have to come and we have to bring the trees for frankincense and bring the trees for myrrh and bring the trees for cinnamon and bring the trees. And we have to plant them and we have to grow them and nurture them. And we have to get our own olive trees. We have to have our own land to have our own products for our own service, let alone provide to the greater community. And we need these things again to make atonement for ourselves before Yah. Because you have smitten the man, his brother, his son, his neighbor, that you may bring a blessing upon you this day. So today is the day. If you are watching this, today is the day for you to make this atonement. Give and come. Give. We have to build before you get here. So give and come. Don't come and then give because there's nothing built for you yet. Right? You represent a thousand. Two of you, ten thousand. So we have to build for a thousand for the one that comes. Each one. Every time I see one, I know I have to build for a thousand more behind him. For each two, I have to have enough for 10,000. That's the level of preparation. The level of food, not so much the level of persons. But this is the level of preparation we have to make. So you have to give, we have to start building, and then you have to come. Those who come will be able to get you residency here. Why? You've given. This is such a large project and you're part of a community collective. We'll get you residency. It's business. It's investment. That's my video for today. I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you all carry it around. Share it. Make it viral. Make it controversial. Argue with it. Make my face the face of this movement. Tell everybody we're here to rebuild. Tell black people it's time to stop being black.